Welcome back to more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Last time we finished the Cherry Cup, so this time we're moving on to the final wave. We're actually starting on this menu because a lot has been added in this update. First up, there's now a music player. You can either have the songs play sequentially, loop a specific song, or shuffle them by pressing X. You can even listen to the Booster Course Pass songs even if you don't own the DLC. The one omission in this is you can't listen to any lap variations, for example the final lap versions of songs or the incremental speedups with Baby Park. We also have one more amiibo suit with a Daisy amiibo. With that being said, let's hop into the Grand Prix mode. As always, we'll be playing 150cc, and we also have quite a few new characters. Additionally, we also have new Mi suits. For example, we have quite a few based on tour costumes and characters that don't have amiibo. We have Peachette, Pauline, Funky Kong, and Diddy Kong as our new main characters. I was originally planning to play as PD Piranha for reasons that will be obvious in a bit, but I've actually decided to play as Diddy Kong instead using our standard cart configuration. And next up is the Acorn Cup. First up is Rome Avanti from Mario Kart Tour, yet another city track. In general, this isn't one of my favorites, but that being said, I do still think this is a pretty fun course, which is actually a testament to how good these final two cups are. In general, I do feel like this might be one of the strongest overall waves, even if a lot of my favorite tracks were in the earlier waves. We do have the Coliseum here that we do drive through a little bit, but in general, like a lot of the tour courses, this can be a little bit overwhelming. In a lot of ways, this does feel a little bit better balanced than some. Like, some of the early tour city courses had a problem where some of the laps were incredibly short compared to others. And I do feel like the city courses in this wave are a little bit better in that regard, but still a little bit lopsided in some ways. That being said, I do feel like this is a fairly pretty city course. In general, I do feel like these are some of the weaker courses visually, partially just because a lot of the buildings tend to look a little bit flat, and I do feel like some of the more nature-based courses tend to have better graphics, especially in the Booster Course Pass, where again, the graphics are a little bit hit or miss. There's a lot of areas where the graphics feel a little bit unpolished in some spots, but other courses look incredible. So, as always, it's a bit mixed. So again, I do feel like Rome Avanti is probably my least favorite of this wave, but I still think it's a little bit better than a lot of the early city courses. And again, I do feel like in general, the waves did improve as they went along. I definitely feel like the first wave visually and in terms of course selection ended up being one of the weaker ones. But again, I do feel like in general that is a good thing, that it got better and better, but I also kind of wish that the early tracks had looked a bit better too, and some of the selections were a little bit better. Because again, a lot of courses from Tour aren't actually in the Booster Course Pass. There's still quite a few that are only in Mario Kart Tour, which, by the way, is actually wrapping up before too long. Basically, they're no longer adding new content, and are just kind of recycling old tours, so in general, the current belief is that that game probably won't go on too much longer before they shut down the servers, so there are some concerns that certain tracks will be lost, assuming they also won't come back in a future Mario Kart after this. But again, this being the final wave, there are some concerns that certain tracks will essentially become unplayable before too long. But overall, that race went pretty smoothly to kick off this first cup of the wave. Next up is DK Mountain from Mario Kart Double Dash, a fan favorite that, to be honest, I'm not entirely sure how to feel about for a few reasons. For one thing, I grew up with Double Dash, so I have a lot of nostalgia for these courses. That being said, I almost feel like 
It's a little bit disappointing because it's appeared in so many games already compared to a lot of other tracks that haven't really gotten as much of a time to shine. From Mario Kart Tour, the only other GameCube tracks were Dino Dino Jungle and Mushroom Bridge, which to be honest, I feel like Mushroom Bridge would not be the most exciting course, especially this late into the booster course pass, but just because it hasn't appeared as much, I almost would have preferred that. Dino Dino Jungle I'm also pretty sure appeared in a similar number of games at this point. I think it was in Mario Kart 7, for example, if I'm not mistaken. So this would have been its fourth appearance, similar to DK Mountain. But that being said, since I didn't really play much of Mario Kart 7 in the past, I definitely feel like that course would have been a little bit fresher compared to this, which I'm pretty sure was in Mario Kart Wii as well. One interesting detail is the bridge actually sways again, which was not the case in Mario Kart Tour, from what I recall. And this is also the reason why I wanted to play as Diddy Kong for this particular cup, because this is obviously a course from the only other mainline Mario Kart game on console where Diddy Kong was playable, because he basically wasn't playable between Double Dash and this. So it's a really big deal that he's finally here. We also have these barrels here that kind of obstruct parts of this ramp. In general, I feel like the chorus is a bit wider, if that makes sense. Like, it's, it feels bigger in terms of scale, and as a result, it feels like it's a little bit less treacherous, but a little bit more forgiving. That being said, certain shortcuts still work perfectly fine, like using a mushroom to get over that fence and skipping part of this gap. But in general, I still really love this course, but I do wish the course selection had been a little bit different for Double Dash specifically. It wasn't in Mario Kart Tour, and to be honest, I feel like it would be kind of a nightmare to actually play through this with either touch controls or tilt controls. But I really wish Mushroom City from Double Dash had been added to Tour at some point, because I think that would be a really fun course. But again, there are so, there's so many retro courses still that have never actually reappeared in the series, and I almost feel like to some extent they are trying to save some for later, because the retro courses are a staple ever since Mario Kart DS, and to be honest, they've definitely reused quite a few courses as is, and I kind of have to suspect that they're saving a few for a potential follow-up to Mario Kart 8 in the future. Again, this game's track list is really incredible as is, so I can't really complain too much, but there's still a few omissions that I do feel like are kind of a shame. There are definitely some tracks I would have reordered a bit, like I feel like some of the later tracks could have been earlier and vice versa, but again, I really can't complain too much with this incredible track list. Next, we have Daisy Circuit from Mario Kart Wii, a very interesting choice for a few reasons. For one thing, based on the initial data mine that listed course IDs based on console, there wasn't supposed to be a Wii track here. It's actually a GameCube track, if I'm not mistaken, and it is currently believed that this basically replaced a GameCube track, which again, is kind of a shame. Mario Kart Wii has a lot of representation in this game, so I definitely would have preferred, again, either Mushroom Bridge or Dino Dino Jungle instead of yet another Wii track. But that being said, I always, always like this track quite a bit, so I can't complain too much. I do feel like this made the jump really smoothly compared to some of the tracks. I feel like this is a really pretty course in general, and again, even if Mario Kart Wii isn't really my cup of tea, I definitely still feel like this is a fun track to have. Um, again, I did start playing Tour partway through the release of these waves, and it does feel kind of surreal playing some of these courses with like an actual controller and traditional controls, and it feels a lot better. And again, for that reason, I do almost wish that certain tracks had been added in favor of others, just for the sake of preserving them in the game with, tr with traditional controls. Uh, but again, I do feel like I can't complain too much with this. In general, I feel like Mario Kart Wii is a game that I didn't really play enough of. Like, I played a lot of Double Dash, that being my first console Mario Kart I need to specify, because again, my very first was Super Circuit, actually. And then, basically with Mario Kart Wii, I really didn't put much time into it because I almost feel like it was skewed more towards the online, and at that point, I really wasn't playing games online. 
and by the time I did briefly try Mario Kart Wii, I don't know if I've actually ever told this story on the video, but I actually, for the final day of the Wii Connect service, or the Nintendo Wi-Fi service specifically, I decided to boot up Mario Kart Wii and try it out. And I immediately got into a lobby with a bunch of hackers who basically finished the race instantly. So obviously my first and only online Mario Kart Wii experience was not ideal. As a result, I do feel like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is probably one of my favorites overall just because I did get to experience more of the game, and again, it's just a more complete package compared to other games like Mario Kart Wii. But again, I do like a lot of the tracks, but I almost also feel like the items are very overbearing in that game, which does also color my opinion quite a bit. Finally, for the Acorn Cup, we have Piranha Plant Cove from Mario Kart Tour, which is another interesting track because of a potential omission. Basically, in terms of Tour original tracks that aren't cities, there's only one that's not in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and that's one called Piranha Plant Pipeline, if I'm not mistaken, which is kind of akin to Piranha Plant Slide from the base game, so I kind of understand why between the two Piranha Plant courses, this would be the one to keep, and the other one is a little bit more expendable, but it does create a problem of Piranha Plant Pipeline is now just stuck in Mario Kart Tour, again, assuming it doesn't come back for a potential sequel to Mario Kart 8 on whatever the next console is. I'm pretty sure at this point they're not going to put out another new Mario Kart on Switch, given how Ridiculous, this game is still selling at this point. In general, this is a fun course. This is also the only tour, non-city track that actually has shifting laps also, so that makes it kind of unique. And in general, it is one of the more complicated courses, I think, so I feel like it really fits the changing lap style. But again, it is interesting which ones do have this system and which ones don't. Some like Ninja Hideaway are fairly non-linear anyway, so I almost feel like it doesn't need to actually point you in specific directions, but a course like this that's so open, but also like kind of linear if that makes sense, it definitely makes sense to kind of incorporate mechanics like this. And again, it does make me wonder if they're kind of testing the waters on a potential sequel, having more evolving laps like this, and potentially having even more changes, kind of going like full Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing Transformed with it, and having a lot more dynamic changes between laps. But again, this just kind of feels like they're testing out some thing things right now, and in general I kind of feel like it's mixed. Some of the implementation is fine, others can be a little bit too overwhelming, and again, certain city courses in particular, you just look at the minimap and see it's just a tangle of roads to the point where it's just overwhelming, and those I feel like are a little bit much, but again, with slightly more... Like, if they're designing courses around transforming laps, I think it could work really well, but again, trying to Im incorporate different track layouts into a game like this, it does mean that sometimes they just kind of end up being very confusing. And again, this is part of the reason why I was originally planning to play PD Piranha on this course, but again, with the inclusion of Diddy Kong and a ton of other characters, I decided to opt for Diddy instead, since again, he hadn't really appeared, though to be fair, PD Piranha also hasn't appeared for a while, but that takes care of the Acorn Cup. Once again, we have one in every race. Overall, I'd say the Acorn Cup is solid. I don't think it's my favorite, just because even though I like DK Mountain, it also feels a little bit redundant with the snow course from the previous wave, but in general, a lot of the courses are just pretty good, but none like really stand out on like a high level, if that makes sense. But again, this is still a pretty solid course, a set of courses overall. And with that, we have yet another gold trophy, 
And only one more cup to go at long last, which we'll be tackling next time. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next time for more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe.